here. So what we're about to do is listen to a phone call straight from my office. Now, every single phone call in my office is recorded. And what we do is I listen to these phone calls on the weekends or sometime on flights so I can then give feedback to my sales reps on what they're doing right and what they need some improvement on. So with this call here, I'm actually listening to it at the for, for the first time, just like you. Um, this is a new sales rep. His name is Casey. And his goal on these phone calls is to set an appointment with the seller. First, qualify them and then set them. Um, so he's going to be building rapport, building the trust, breaking down any barriers and trying to find a pain point to see if he can actually get the, uh, the appointment. And then it's up to the acquisitions manager or the acquisitions team to go out and actually close on this. Now, if the property was real hot and the guy just numbers just made sense and he started throwing out numbers right away, of course, we'll just close the sale right on the phone. But majority of time, uh, I would say probably 60, 65 percent of the time, we're going to have to go on the appointment. All right, so listen to this call as I listen to it. And what you're going to hear is what I would actually be saying in my head and taking notes so that I can give him feedback at a later time at our weekly meetings. So let's listen to this and see where we are. One of my colleagues or even myself, I can't remember, it's probably been a while, um, about the property off of Window Avenue in High Point. Uh -huh. And uh, just calling to do a little follow-up with your partner and to see what the status of it was. So what I can tell he's doing is follow-up. So in our CRM, we have a bunch of follow-ups from uh, that need to be called. And this is probably something that he didn't initially call, but he's calling back. And a lot of good old dead leads that are sitting in your CRM are actually the place where you should start any new rep coming in to be able to get their feet warm on on the deals and making phone calls. Um, I don't... I don't really know. I got a lot of people, to be honest with you, you know. So what I'm picking up is a sign of frustration from him immediately. He doesn't know the answer to the question he asked, and he takes a very deep breath, and he says, I don't know. So let's. And now I'm picking up, and this is when my antennas start going off as I need to start keying on this person's conversation. No, I ain't got time to be playing on games. I'm in the process of remodeling the house. How are you? Yeah, well, I've done some, I've done some renovations to it. So immediately as we start this phone call, he puts up his guard. I ain't got no time to be playing games, right? I don't want no crazy offer. So that means he's had some contacts with some investors, some wholesalers that have been throwing out some real crazy numbers to him, and he doesn't want to play those games anymore. So now it's Casey's job to defuse him and tell him to put those arms down. Let's see if he does a good job. Okay. And uh, um, I've had so many people to come to offer to buy the house. You know, just it's every week, <laughs> and I'm not getting ready to entertain offers that are they're just coming to me with these ridiculous offers. And so, you know, I know what the house is worth. I know what the value of the house it is it is right now. And when people come with these ridiculous offers, because I'm not desperate to sell it, and I don't, I'm not even interested in selling it. But oh. <laughs> if the price is right, I'll sell it. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Uh, that's that's usually the way it goes. The price is right. right. So, right. So, you know, you know, I, I don't have time to entertain ridiculous offers. That's all I'm saying. And gotcha. if somebody comes with a, cur you know, correct offer, we can sign ink the deal because I, I got I got other properties. And this is the only one that I would even uh, try to sell at this time. So I can tell the guy's car carefully picking his words. He says he has other properties, and this is the only one he's considering on selling. So f as me, if I was on the phone, I would wonder why this is the only one he's considering selling. I already know. It's probably that the property is uh, obviously not fully renovated. It's not doesn't have a tenant in it, and it's been his pain problem, the ones that need the most work. Oh, really? Okay. Um, well, the reason I asked is because, you know, uh, we're real estate investors right here in Winston-Salem and looking for three to five more properties uh, right there in the High Point area um, to ultimately do a little light renovation on and put it in our rental portfolio. You okay. know. Uh, so what Casey's doing, he's doing is a classic example of setting the stage and the expectation for the seller. He's saying, hey, look, we're a group of investors. We want to buy a couple more properties in that area in High Point, and uh, we're, we're – this is what we're going to do with the property. We're going to fix it up lightly and turn it into a rental property. So he needs to understand what we do so that he can under, understand where we're coming from and what type of price and why we have to offer that. 
Um, so, you know, we know we don't buy homes at retail, of course, because we're going to spend the money on them and fix Important fact. He's telling him straight up. I do not buy houses at retail because we're investors. Fix them up and make them right. uh, HGTV ready. Uh, kind of like what you're already in the process of doing. Um, ultimately saving homeowners the money from putting it in the property and they may or may not get it out in the long run. So one thing I tell my staff to use is everybody's common with these flip shows. So we always try to mention something they can relate to. So we say, listen, we try to get the property to HGTV standards, um, not typically with the rental property, but at least they know, hey, look, he's going to do a lot of work. And then so, you know, be free and clear off their head, off their shoulders. All right. But you, you said you weren't really interested in selling it anyway. Um, what kind of offer would you entertain? Well, how much you want? How much would you take for the place? So right here, he's asking, he's going for the first anchor or the first soft close. I need to get a number out there to see what we're playing with. Um, 25,000. 25? And how, how much work is needed or what, what have you already done to it? Now with my experience, and I hate to keep stopping this, with my experience, I already knew he threw that number out in the middle of nowhere. He has no reason why, I, I, like an idea why he picked 25,000. But uh replaced all the windows in it i put a new roof on it i replaced the doors and frames on it uh patched a couple of the ceilings up so they're brand new um only i took all the old siding off i was just gonna put some new siding on it basically i put uh when, when i took the old siding off though there was some rotten wood on it so i need to replace that wood and put the new siding on it Gotcha. Well, it has a cedar shakes on it, or was it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, cedar shakes are nice for about 15, 20 years, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I also, I, I took the, the bathroom. The bathroom was so old that I took the tub, toilet, and the sink out. Okay. And I wanted to replace all of that. I also took the walls and the floor out of the bathroom. So I was so he sounds like he's doing some of the repairs himself, but he's also telling you what kind of needs to be done and what his pain points are. The bathroom was so old, I took the sink, tub, and everything out and the walls out. So you basically got a bare bathroom, and you can tell he's doing all this work himself. So him not him not having time or the resources to do this is, might be the reason why he's considering selling. And it's an uphill battle for him because if it was easy, he wouldn't sell. I'm going to make the bathroom completely brand new. Yeah, that's yeah, because you know as well as I do, uh, kitchens and bathrooms and entertainment areas are what really sell homes nowadays. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah, um, so I was gonna make the bathroom brand. I just put some new sheetrock up and put a new tub on the sink. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, what makes you want to sell this one if you sold any of them? Great versus... question. This is the smallest one, um, and this is the oldest one. <laughs> So it's the smallest property owns and oldest. He means the most damage or the most work that needs to be done. Oh, what year was it? Uh, I can remember. 52, I think it is. I think. I can't, I can't remember all the dates on these houses. Pretty old. I mean, 60s, 50s? 50s. 50s okay gotcha. yeah. so yeah it does have some yeah, it's a cute little house if i get it remodeled you know as soon as i put the siding on it it's gonna be it's gonna pop back together <laughs> yeah yeah at least at least from the outside from the curb yeah. or curb appeal uh, yeah yeah, I really yeah curb that. appeal yeah when, when, it definitely it took a change when i put the new windows in it and took all the old doors and frames down and put new doors and frames new storm doors What's the uh, tax value over there in that area, like on most of those houses that size? What, what are they going uh, for? 50s. In right the 50s? Yeah. Gotcha. I think the house, the um, house next door, though, the house across the street and the house next door, they're probably 60, 70, though. Okay. But they're just, they're, they're yeah. much bigger, I imagine, all right? Right, yeah, that little bit. Do you own it free and clear, or you still got a mortgage on it, or? I got the deed to it free and clear. Oh, okay, okay. You don't owe any taxes or anything? No. Uh, well, I might owe a little bit of tax on it. I can go up there and pay that anytime. Nothing crazy, though. Right, nothing crazy. Yeah, it might be three or $400 I owe on it. I got to, matter of fact, I got to go check on that. I'm glad you said something.
Gotcha. <laughs> hey, well, there you go. At least I can remind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm good for but something, just, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but just but for me to just to give it away, I'm not going to do that. Gotcha. Well, yeah. how much more work would you say really needs to be done to bro- bring it up to 2019 standards? Like, you know, kitchen, bathrooms. Uh, um, did, you, did you say anything about a roof? I didn't think you did. I said I put a new roof on it. Oh, you put a new roof on it. I, I'm sorry. Right. I didn't, didn't hear that yeah. part. Sorry about that. New windows, new doors and frames, new roof. Still, uh, patched a couple of ceilings up there, brand new. Another ceiling. Uh, one of the ceilings in the bedroom needs to be redone again. Um, like I say, I ripped the whole bathroom out. Once you, once you, uh, I also did the, uh, replaced all the electrical. Okay. Oh, okay. I also put new plumbing in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, I also put a wash and dryer connection in the kitchen where I was going to just put a stackable cool. in, inside the kitchen. Gotcha. Yeah, and so I actually got the line for that in the kitchen, and I also got the stackable ready to put it in there. Uh, once you once you plaster the walls, a couple of the walls up, and sand the floor, all the whole house is a uh, hardwood floor. So the, most of ninety percent of the floors is good. It needs to be patched up a couple of spots. Yeah. But um. Now, do you that, have you been paying somebody to do all this work, or you do it yourself, or? No, one of my one of my one of my friends. Okay, yeah, so but, yeah. you get you get a friend discount at least, then, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's a lot better than uh, having to pay a contractor full on. Yeah, full but on I, job. I was going. Yeah, my friend moved. To, he moved to Detroit, and he's been up there for a while, remodeling houses, and he hadn't been back in a while. So there goes the pain point right there. He was paying a friend to do this remodel, and the friend left. And he lives in Detroit now. So that's why this house is sitting the way it's hit it, sitting, because he has nobody to do the work for him. I didn't know about what I, my situation was. I, I could have, you know, maybe get a contractor to finish it up. I don't, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure right now. Uh, I'm, I'll entertain offers and, you know, if the right offer comes, I'll just sell it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I started to think about it uh, being close to, to your number, but. Um, with the amount of work, because I mean, I don't do, I do some of it myself, but I do, I just don't have time to do it anymore. Right. Uh, so ultimately I'm having to pay a contractor now myself. Now it's you got a good better, contractor? Yeah, it's better than, yeah, I got a good contractor. It's, it's, um, it's, he does all of our work for us, calling our commercial and our, uh, rental properties. And, okay. um, uh, when he has time, you know, does the full rehabs on the big, big stuff that we list on the market. Right. Um, but uh, you know, it's just it just it comes down to the amount of work left to do. So what Casey did is a classic example of saying, "Listen, I was interested around your number, but then you started to mention all of the problems with the house, and I'm just too busy of a type of person, so I don't get to do it yourself discount. I have to pay a contractor." So what he's setting in the guy's mind is, "Yep, your price twenty five wasn't too bad." Then you started talking about all this stuff that you got to fix. And then you, I got to do this stuff myself. You get a friend's discount and mm, I, I can't touch 25 is what he's saying. Um, you know, materials and all that good stuff, the pricing that he would charge and what I would have in it to I me, mean, cause I'm, I'm doing it for a reason. I'm, you know, I'm an investor. I mean, I want right. to make some mon- money off of it, whether right. we put it in a rent- rental portfolio for a year or two and then sell it, or if we go ahead and fully rehab it inside and out, um, and then list it on the market and, you know, sit on it mm-hmm. sometimes up to a year we've sat on houses. Um, right. so, you know, it's, it's kind of the risk we're willing to take if we can get the right price. Um, you yeah. know, we, yeah. we, we do pay cash too. Um, you know, a lot of people want to finance to you and all this and that, and the other, um, so I mean, w- would you be willing to open for a cash offer on it or? Certainly. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I mean, only offers I want. I hear that. <laughs> Is this eventually? Something- we're, eventually, if I don't sell this house within the, this year, if I don't sell this house, all I'm gonna do is completely remodel this house and sell it myself. I'm gonna sell it then. I'm gonna get what I really want then. Gotcha. 
Yeah, I was going to ask if if you got a decent figure that was you know uh, reasonable, how fast would you be willing to sell it? Yeah, real fast. Real fast. <laughs> okay. Real fast. Gotcha. Tomorrow. Well, Tomorrow, okay. Hey, tomorrow would work for me if we can uh, both be happy on the price here. Um, when would be a good time for my guy to come out and take a look at it and just to see what we got left and what it's going to cost us to get it back in shape? I mean, because like, like I said, if we do it, we're we're either going to go full out out with it or or you know finish it up where it's livable and then you know put a renter in there and such forth. Yeah. There's a couple of different options that we have, so right. Nine, um, times out, nine times out of ten, we can usually make you an offer on the spot, um, and usually within 24 hours, I can compile my numbers and see what okay. we have to, have to go. You know. Um. Only time I'm available is early morning. Early mornings. Yeah. Okay. Let me uh hold on for me one second. Let me see what the schedule looks right like right quick. Okay. Okay. So at this point, Casey's probably asking because he's newer to see if he's on the right track. And he is. He is on the right track. And he puts the guy on hold, and he's probably uh, really looking to see how fast we can get out there. Um, but I'm sure I, – I think this deal – now I remember this deal. Um, we did a YouTube video on this deal, and Casey got the guy down to a very good price. It wasn't 25000 I think you have to watch something else to see. I think it was around uh, ten or twelve thousand, I believe. Okay, you there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so today is Tuesday. What about Friday morning? That'll work. What time Friday is good for you? Like nine ten? Oh uh, yeah. Um, ten in the morning. In the morning. Let's uh let's let's do it in the middle at ten thirty. Okay, hold on. I, I hold on. It's getting too late. That's too I work late. Third, okay. I work third shift. Oh, okay. okay. It's nine. So I, hey, I really prefer seven thirty eight in the morning. I get out <laughs> at seven thirty. How about nine thirty? Let's do. Well, I was gonna say nine nine thirty. Whatever works for you then. Yeah. Let's say nine thirty eight. So we now we discovered, which Casey should have been asking, you know, what type of work and all that type of stuff. Get the building rapport. Because this guy works third shift, so, you know, he gets off of work. He wants to go to sleep, so he really doesn't have the time to do this stuff himself. Damn sharp. I'll be there. 9.30 Friday. Gotcha. I, I need to be in the bed by 10.30. <laughs> hey, I, I can understand. Now, it won't take that long. My guy, right. he's, been, he's been doing this for 25 years. He knows what he's looking at, and he knows what work needs to be done. Um, he'll assess the home, you know, and um, hopefully be able to make your offer right then and there. If is, not, is this, is this a gentleman that in you know, the assessment? Is, the, is this the contractor? No, this is not the contractor. Uh, the contractor is actually on a job right now in oh, okay. um, in Winston Salem. Um, so, but he you know he knows what the, con the our contractor prices stuff out. I mean, he, they, they they've been doing this for twenty years. Those those oh, okay. two, those two. That's his guy. Um, okay. He's a, he's an acquisition specialist. So, like I said, he's been at factor for 20 years. He's actually a, r a real estate broker himself, um, okay. but he does the, the investing side with us. He works with us. Okay. Um, so, like I said, he's not. This is nothing new to him. We've we've probably done two, three hundred thousand homes or more um, okay. in his own lifetime between brokering and investing. <laughs> so, right. and, and I'm of course that's an exaggeration, but. Um, so Friday, nine thirty looks good for you then? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the schedule and, uh, his name's Francis. Um, I'm not sure which truck he'll be in, but he'll probably be in a silver dually. I know okay. he's, I know he's trying to get a new truck this week. He might be in a different truck, but, uh, okay. he'll introduce himself and all that good stuff, but I, I'll go ahead and put it on the schedule. Uh, he'll meet you out there, run through it, see what we got going on, see where we can be. And, uh, we'll go from there. How about that? All right, you can have him to call me uh, Friday morning to confirm. He can call me eight eight thirty nine, whatever. Yeah, I'll I'll call you as soon as I get in here. I uh, Friday uh, I tend to um, come in about nine Friday, okay, so I just I'll just uh you know I'm double check make sure he's moving and everything's going right. You never know what happens. A flat tire will hold you back, you know. But uh, okay, 
I'll uh, make sure everything's good to go with him. Call you Friday morning just to confirm that uh, I know you'll be up because you're just getting off yeah. work. So, yeah. but uh, but we'll see you then, bud, bro. All right. Okay. All right. All thank you, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you, buddy. Thank you. Now, so overall, this was not a bad call for Casey. There's some opportunities that he missed that he should have said some things. Um, but overall, it was the thumbs up call. He got what he needed out of the information. He could have pulled a little bit more if he would have dived into the guy's personal questions and stuff. But overall, it was a great question. He booked the appointment. He knows we're at 20. He wants to be at 25. The guys know we cannot be at 25. So now it's up to the acquisitions manager with all this information to go there and really assess the property to tell the guy, hey, look, this is where we need to be at in order to make this work. And I and I think the uh, story is a happy ending to the story where we do acquire this property. And I think it's around $13,000 um 10 in the guy's pocket and a couple grand on back taxes so um this is a cool story and i hope you guys like this i can do more of these breakdowns for you and if you're watching on youtube please comment below on what you picked up if gems were dropped and you pick something up tell me what it is if you're listening on itunes do me a favor tell me in those comments um and also give me a five star rating to let me know you really appreciate this and i'll see you guys on the other side